Hello, my lovely peaches. How are you? I'm just going to open up this curtain. So I just premiered a bunch of like four little videos that I had on TikTok. But apparently when you save a video from TikTok and then you... And then you load it up onto YouTube, the quality goes way down of the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those four videos and I'm going to put them together in this one video. CatLoveDreamingPeach.com And hopefully it'll be better quality and uh, it'll be a combined longer video. I'm just going to leave those other shorter videos up there anyway, even though they're low quality. If you like the video, but you don't like the low quality, you can just check out my TikTok. They're there and they look higher quality. So that's what this is. This is going to be four videos combined, hopefully for better quality. Okay, enjoy. Believe in the Makes it pretty obvious the sort of policy problems that he and others are hoping to use a second Trump term to address. He talks about life and mother. Well, I don't actually believe in those exceptions. So I want to make sure that we can say we're a Christian nation. And my viewpoint is mostly that I would probably be Christian nation. That's pretty close to Christian nationalism. Can we, if we're going to have legal immigration, can we get people that actually believe in, in Christianity? Is that in an ideal world? I mean, I think we, we, we could save the country in a sense of, uh, you know, the largest deep in history. And we'd have a national ban of good, right? The president has, you know, the ability both along the border uh, and elsewhere to maintain law and order with the military. So just a couple quick things to say about this. One is, it's just kind of amazing how stupid Trump and his close campaign associates think these voters are. Think his voters are. CatLoveDreamingPeach.com Dark turned off all my lights pretty much. Let's see. Turn that on. Hello, my lovely peaches. How are you? It's, oh gosh, it's already Saturday. It's 12.07 a.m. It's late night. That's why all the lights are out. So I've been working on a video that I transcribed the introduction by J.D. Vance to the... Project 2025 Leaders Book, which is called Dawn's Early Light, Taking Back Washington to Save America. So I took the transcript and then I put it into Natural Readers, which is a text-to-speech reader with AI voices, and I purchased it so it's like a pro level voice it sounds a little bit more human not completely human but human enough but the reason i wanted to just pop in and do a quick video is to say as i've scrolled through listening to various debates people who want to vote for trump what their reasonings are what their explanations what their excuses i've seen people on mainstream media i've seen people on youtube i've heard the various reasons the various excuses the various so-called policies the various reasonings for why different people are going to vote for trump or think that Kamala is not a good candidate, and I have to be honest, I'm going to just keep saying this. Maybe I'm just going to keep making videos saying the same thing, which is those excuses are flimsy, and they're transparent. And every single person who has said that they would vote for a man who has been found legally liable in a court of law two separate times of S.A. That says everything about you. There's somebody on my YouTube channel who posted a video, a transphobic video, and it was very misguided. And 
she claimed that that one doctor's very controversial practice and one tragic situation is the basis of all trans uh, theory. And that's just completely wrong. Then they sent me a, a message. Do you think Walls is a PDF? And I'm like, okay. So when I responded to that person saying, while that person's work is controversial, it's by no means everything. All of the studies, all of the theories. It, you know, one tragic story is not everybody's story. And they replied, that's all I needed to know. Well, you know what? The fact that you would vote for somebody who has been found legally liable and have to pay 80... I, I double-checked. The first case, E. Jean Carroll won. She won $5 million. The second case, she won a combined $83 million. She proved her case. Donald Trump did do the thing. He did the thing. And y'all up here making every excuse. That's that's the other thing that I wanted to say and the reason why I wanted to make this video. Just now I was scrolling through and I heard somebody making an excuse about Tim Walls had said a statement that he carried a weapon of war. But he said he carried a weapon in war. And what that person is clinging to is like, he lied about his service. The man served for 24 years. And you're finding one word? Instead of saying of war, he said in war. And that's the basis of what you're like. So you would excuse a man essaying a woman. Because you, you, it, it, the point of this video is to say the, the MAGA cult people, every reason I've seen and heard, it's like you are mind bending your brain into a pretzel. I was going to say into a twitzel. You are twisting your brain into a twitzel of kerfunkle, kerflumpy, fluffy, like spewing. It's spewing, like Trump said. Spewing nonsense. The cognitive dissonance. The fumes. The fumes in this tiny brain of yours. It's like the hatred is so thick. The misogyny. The xenophobia. The sexism. The racism. It's so thick. Thick. It's permeating everything. And... Including, it's fogging over your eyes. It's fogging over your, like, you can't think straight. You think you can think straight. Because you only want things to be straight. <laughs> but, the but like, it just doesn't make sense. You're trying to justify how you could vote for a criminal by coming up with every little tiny microscopic excuse that you want to blow up and magnify and make it seem as if those are really big, huge, real reasons. And then you're trying to diminish the really big, huge reasons why you should never vote for somebody who did the things that he did, says the things that he says, talks the way he talks, treats people the way he treats people, doesn't pay his bills, and expects to get away with the crimes that he's committed and you're out here saying yep I endorse that that's my man that's my man this is your man yes look at the screen <laughs> that's mine and, and, that, and, that's, and, that's, and that's what you're you going to settle beside for him. I'm going to stick beside him and you will this go is your man. down with the ship and um, down with the boat. And then you can decide, do you want to jump off the boat 
and get in the water with the sharks or you're going to stay in the boat so that the battery and the water and the electrocution and, and then you're going to fight between the boat and the electrocution and you're going to have to decide the sharks or the electrocution. Well, yeah. so I just, I'm just more mind boggled every day to see the people clinging and every day Donald Trump gets more and more unhinged. He says the most ridiculous, insane, off the wall stuff. And you're up over here clinging to this man, clinging to a dying philosophy clinging to an outdated old-fashioned outmoded way of thinking you are the new minority you are out of touch out of time and we're not going back we're not we're not going back we're not going back we're not going back we're moving ahead to the future where Kamala and Walls will be the president, Madam President, to you. And I cannot wait to see all you weirdos scurry back under the rocks where you came from and finally be ashamed and afraid to speak your racist, xenophobic misogyny out loud. Let's go back to a time where people like that had to zip it and keep it quiet and go back to some weird chat forum on a weird website where only a few freaks can come out at night because your excuses are flimsy and your time is up. The other night, the shark, they were saying, oh, sharks, we have to protect them. I said, wait a minute, wait. They actually want to remove all the seals in order to save the shark. I said, wait a minute. They were saying the other night, the shark. They were saying, oh, sharks, we have to protect them. I said, wait a minute, wait. They actually want to remove all the seals in order to save the shark. I said, wait a minute, don't you have it the other way around? That's true. Well, I'm not a big fan of sharks either. I don't know how many votes am I gonna lose. I have people calling me up, sir, we wanted to we have a fun to save the shark. It's called Save the Shark. I say, no, thank you. I have other things I can contribute to. And he said, nobody ever asked this. No apparent reason whatsoever talking about what would happen if a submarine was attacked. Because we found the greatest ever speech ever given by any human being ever. This is Donald Trump at a rally in Las Vegas for no best thing, which is a Trump speech. Joe. You lie and you know it, Caleb. We ditched it because we found the greatest ever speech ever given by any human being ever. This is Donald Trump at a rally in Las Vegas for no apparent reason whatsoever talking about what would happen if a submarine was attacked by a shark. Have a look. So I said, let me ask you a question. And he said, nobody ever asked this question. And it must be because of MIT, my relationship to MIT. Very smart. He goes, I say, what would happen if the boat sank from its weight and you're in the boat and you have this tremendously powerful battery and the battery's now underwater and there's a shark that's approximately 10 yards exactly. over there. By the way, a lot of shark attacks lately. Do you notice that? A lot of shark. I watched some guys time. justifying it today. Well, they weren't really that angry. They bit off the young lady's leg because of the fact that they what? were they were not hungry, but they misunderstood what who she was. Stay focused, Donald. Back quit. to the boat. He said there's no problem with sharks. They just didn't really understand yeah. a young woman swimming. Now it really got decimated. And other I people agree with you, Donald, but this is about the said, boat. So there's a shark 10 yards away from the boat. Thank you. Uh, 10 he's back yards. On track. Or here. Do I get electrocuted? If the boat is sinking, water goes over the battery, the boat is sinking. Do I stay on top of the boat and get electrocuted? Or do I jump over by the shark and not get electrocuted? Because I will tell you, he didn't know the answer. He said, you know, nobody's ever asked me that question. I said, I think it's a good question. I think there's a lot of electric current coming through that water. But you know what I'd do if there was a shark or you get electrocuted? I'll take electrocution every single time. <laughs> yes! Yes! Violent Forward.
forward to project 2025 leader's new book. Vance's forward to Dawn's early light. Trump's running mate writes that it's time to circle the wagons and load the muskets. In the classic American film Pulp Fiction, John Travolta's character, recently returned from Amsterdam, observes that Europe has the same consumer goods as America. But there it's just a little different. That's how I feel about Kevin Roberts's life. He grew up in a poor family in a corner of the country largely ignored by America's elites, but his corner was in Louisiana and mine in Ohio and Kentucky. Like me, he's a Catholic, but unlike me, he was born into it. His grandparents played an outsized role in his life, just as mine did. And now he works far from where he grew up, just a few steps from my office, in Washington, D.C. He is the president of one of Washington's most influential think tanks, and I'm a U.S. senator. Now he has written the book you hold in your hands which explores many of the themes I've focused on in my own work. Yet he does so profoundly, with a readable style that makes accessible its real intellectual rigor. Never before has a figure with Roberts's depth and stature within the American right tried to articulate a genuinely new future for conservatism. The Heritage Foundation isn't some random outpost on Capitol Hill. It is and has been the most influential engine of ideas for Republicans from Ronald Reagan to Donald Trump. Yet it is Heritage's power and influence that makes it easy to avoid risks. Roberts could collect a nice salary, write decent books, and tell donors what they want to hear. But Roberts believes doing the same old thing could lead to the ruin of our nation. If you've read a lot of conservative books, or think you have a good sense of the conservative movement, I suspect the pages that follow will be surprising, even jarring. Roberts understands economics and supports basic free market principles, but he doesn't make an idol out of decades-old theories. He argues persuasively that the modern financial corporation was almost entirely foreign to the founders of our nation. The closest 18th century analog to the modern Apple or Google is the British East India Company, a monstrous hybrid of public and private power that would have made its subjects completely unable to access an American sense of liberty. The idea that our founders meant to make their citizens subjects to this kind of hybrid power is ahistorical and preposterous. Yet too many modern conservatives make such an idol out of the market that they ignore this. A private company that can censor speech, influence elections, and work seamlessly with intelligence services and other federal bureaucrats deserves the scrutiny of the right, not its support. Roberts not only gets this at an instinctive level, he can articulate a political vision to engage in that scrutiny effectively. Roberts sees a conservatism that is focused on the family. In this, he borrows from the old American right that recognized, correctly in my view, that cultural norms and attitudes matter. We should encourage our kids to get married and have kids. We should teach them that marriage isn't just a contract, but a sacred, and to the extent possible, lifelong, union. We should discourage them from behaviors that threaten the stability of their families. But we should also do something else. Create the material circumstances such that having a family isn't only for the privileged. That means better jobs at all levels of the income ladder. That means protecting American industries, even if it leads to higher consumer prices in the short term. That means listening to our young people who are telling us they can't afford to buy a home or start a family, not just criticizing them for a lack of virtue. Roberts is articulating a fundamentally Christian view of culture and economics, recognizing that virtue and material progress go hand in hand. My childhood was not, by any objective measure, easy. Neither was that of Kevin Roberts. Both of us were negatively impacted by family instability, and both of us were saved by the resilience of the thick network of family, grandparents, aunts, uncles, that is often the first and most effective component of our social safety net. Both of us saw how a factory leaving a town could destroy the economic stability that provided the foundation for those families. And both of us learned to love the country that gave both of us and our families second chances, despite some bumps along the way. In these pages, Kevin is trying to figure out how we preserve as much of what worked in his own life, while correcting what didn't. To do that, we need more than a politics that simply removes the bad policies of the past. We need to rebuild. We need an offensive conservatism, not merely one that tries to prevent the left from doing things we don't like. Here's an analogy I sometimes use to articulate what the previous generation of conservatives got right and wrong. Imagine a well-maintained garden in a patch of sunlight. It has some imperfections, of course, and many weeds. The very thing that makes it attractive for the things we try to cultivate makes it attractive for the things we don't. In an effort to eliminate the bad, a well-meaning gardener treats the garden with a chemical solution. This kills many of the weeds, but it also kills many of the good things. Undeterred, the gardener keeps adding the solution. Eventually, the soil is inhospitable. In this analogy, modern liberalism is the gardener, the garden is our country, and the voices discouraging the gardener were conservatives. 
We were right, of course. In an effort to correct problems, some real, some imagined, we made a lot of mistakes as a country in the 1960s and 1970s. But to bring the garden back to health, it is not enough to undo the mistakes of the past. The garden needs not just to stop adding a terrible solution, though it does need that. It needs to be recultivated. The old conservative movement argued if you just got government out of the way, natural forces would resolve problems. We are no longer in this situation and must take a different approach. As Kevin Roberts writes, it's fine to take a laissez-faire approach when you are in the safety of the sunshine. But when the twilight descends and you hear the wolves, you've got to circle the wagons and load the muskets. Writes that we are now all realizing that it's time to circle the but when the twilight descends and you hear the wolves, you've got to circle the wagons and load the muskets. We are now all realizing that it's time to circle the wagons and load the muskets. In the fights that lay ahead, these ideas are an essential weapon. J.D. Vance Read J.D. Vance's Violent Forward to Project 2025 Lovedreamingbeach.com AM The kids are with their dad. I wanted to expand a little my painting. My other painting. Like why does it matter that Trump essayed somebody? And why does the fact that that man is actually allowed to run proof that this country is this country is not only systemically racist but it's systemically misogynistic and that misogyny and racism is so deeply intertwined and interwoven into certain people's mentality that they are literally blind to what those of us over here on the blue side can clearly see as them being in a cult, but they don't see it because they, it's like, you know, the sea, seeing the sea in itself as the sea. Oh, that was super uncomfortable. Hold on. Stay hydrated. Gots to coordinate, gots to hydrate. So why is it deeply misogynistic that we're even allowing this man to run because any woman, or I should say any victim These other lights back in. Any person, regardless of your gender or your genitals, who has experienced being harmed by another person or anyone who has a loved one who's ever been harmed by another person, or anyone who has a loved one or a self that they could imagine that they wouldn't want harmed by another person, would probably not want their loved one or themselves to be working side by side with someone who's been proven in a court of law, not once, but twice, to actually SA someone. And that same person has had at least 26 other women coming forward to say the similar kind of thing happened to them from that specific person. And that specific person has been seen and heard on video and audio multiple times over decades outright admitting to S.A. of not only women but minors as well. If you want to hear it, which is horrible, 
but if you want to hear the proof with your own ears, you can go to my YouTube channel and see and hear the videos which I got from the Midas Touch. Ben and Jordan, Jordy and Brett Mysalis, the three brothers who created the Midas Touch channel. And you know what's interesting is that that same creepy person who commented on my video saying that's all I needed to know about me being, I guess you would say, um, not transphobic in a very condescending manner or tone that I read in the comment, oh dear, oh dear, I wish you would get better sources when the sources that I got were me listening to Donald Trump speak himself and forming my own opinion based on that, me listening to videos and audio of him directly saying stuff, me listening to that man's own words. And yes, I did also look at some evidence from courts that I do believe in. I don't always believe in courts across the board. I don't believe in all prosecutors, just like I believed Corey, C Carrie Morrissey. I believed it and it was proven true that she is corrupt. That was Alec Baldwin, Rust, the prosecutor who her case was dismissed because she was corrupt. But it's interesting that that person sent me a YouTube video that's easily disproved as being what she claimed it was. And I have videos on my channel where I've linked every single source, almost, where I've, I've compiled a video where I got clips from interviews and things on television and, you know, other videos and there it's, it's there you can see it with your own eyes you can click on the link you can follow it it's like so so now we're just disbelieving things that are provable and again i understand we live in a world with ai deep fake videos lots of software i just made a video where i put a whole bunch of different things flying around on the screen it was a lot of fun and it took me a few hours but I feel like it really helps to emphasize my opinion of the piece. The point that I really want to get to before this video ends is that I feel like the simplest way to put it is that there's a clear and obvious divide between these two sides, okay? And one side seems to be, let's say the red side seems to be small-minded, they want to put their their very specific fundamental religious beliefs into law, which is literally one of the most important parts of the Constitution that I care about, which is the separation of church and state and being able to live and worship free or not worship freely. And therefore, every hyper-religious Thing that they're trying to make law mind your own damn business it's not your place if that's your way of living your life then that's what you need to do but you don't get to enforce your religious law on to us who don't believe that so you've got one side that wants to keep women down wants to keep people of color down wants to keep people from other countries down a man who would say all these disgusting, xenophobic, insulting, degrading things, and you support that, you endorse that, you would vote for that. And then there's the side that I'm voting for, the blue side, which is a side that wants to give all people, women, men, people of color, people from other countries, people who were born here, people who are gender fluid, people who speak English, people who don't speak English, people who have all kinds of culture and gifts and diversity to bring into this world that we want, we want to include it. I want everybody included, except for people who 
want to force others to live the way they live in a very small-minded way. So basically, you can choose exclusion, lack of diversity, lack of inequity, and excluding. So the opposite of DEI, you have diversity, equity, and inclusion, where we want all kinds of people from all over the world, from all walks of life, from all mind states, from all ways of thinking and living and existing and being in harmony. And this side wants one tiny little group, one homogenous group, which is very dangerous in every sense. Go back and look at my other video, why homogeny is bad. Homogeny is bad in every way, and diversity and equity and inclusion is better and good and lovely. It's the right thing. So you can choose hate and small-mindedness, or you can choose love and inclusion. What did we get wrong in the 70s, the 60s, and the 70s? War was the wrong stuff. Love and togetherness was the right stuff. So you get to choose. Be a new hippie. And again, Christians get out and vote just this time. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years. You know what? It'll be fixed. It'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm a Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good you're not going to have to vote. Again, Christians. This is your man. Yes. Look at the screen. That's mine. And, and, I, that, and, that's, and, that's, and that's what you're going to settle for. I'm going to stick beside him. This yes. is your man. Catlovedreamingpeach.com